in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer to him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all people such things as they will be thus required. Wherefore, let us sit in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Send words of the general confession together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like a lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have never done those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live godly, righteous, and sober, to the glory of thy holy name. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of love, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. Make haste to us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. In the Lord's name be praised. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 66. We are reading verses 1 to 9, and if we say them and to me, so if I say the other verses, if you could respond nice and loudly with the even number of verses, we're going down from that 1 to 9. Be joyful in God, all ye lands. Sing praises unto the honour of his name. Make his praise to be glorious. So say unto God. For all the world shall worship thee, sing of thee, and praise thy name. Oh, come hither, and behold the works of God. How wonderful he is in his delivery to all the children of God. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. There did we rejoice their Lord. He remembered his power forever. He desires to hold the people, and as such as are not believe, shall not be able to exalt themselves. O oh, praise our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. We will hold your counsel in heart, and suffer in heart our feet to serve. For thou, O Lord, hast proved us, thou also hast tried us, 
like as silver is dried. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We sit, sit for our presence. Uh, the first reading this evening is from Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. Spiritual blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy, and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, According to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us, with all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things, according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Here ends the first reading. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the ground in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembered his mercy. Have opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for our sake. The second lesson is taken from Luke, chapter 10, verses 21 to 24. Jesus rejoices. 
At that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then, turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you have seen. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Here ends the second reading. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what an exciting day of sport we are experiencing today. I'm really excited to tell you you're too nervous to watch the football tonight. <laughs> um, but I can't ever remember a time when the men's singles at Wimbledon was on um, and has been so overshadowed by another sporting event. Although I must say that I'm glad that I've been able to watch at least some of the tennis this afternoon. It was still being tightly fought in the, the third set between Djokovic and Berrettini um, when I had to leave to come over here. So if any of you know what the final result is, don't tell me. I should be watching it and catch up after the football. <laughs> And of course now we wait with the longing for football to come home. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing for us to be able to say tomorrow morning? A commentator on BBC News earlier did suggest though to Gareth Southgate that uh, the Italians are finding the whole sentiment of that particular chant uh, arrogant. <laughs> I can't remember the words are arrogant. Um, and in his usual calm way, the England manager countered that with a smile and suggested that it was just, it, was, it wasn't arrogance at all, it's just that Italians didn't understand English humour, which I thought was a wonderful response. Whatever happens in the Euros football finals this evening, I hope and pray that those representing the two countries, both on and off the pitch, remember a sense of humour, accept the results with good grace and celebrate appropriately given the restrictions that are still guiding our lives at this time. I must admit that over the past few weeks I have been watching the ever-increasing numbers at sporting fixtures and gathering in pubs to watch them and I have questioned both the common sense that we are all being charged with having and the priorities of those making the rules. There hasn't been much COVID safety in what I have seen. And yet whether we follow the sport or not, most of us have to admit that there has been a sense of joy and community that we have witnessed that has been missing uh, for a long time in our culture over the past couple of years. Um, we have seen an outpouring, I think, of the neighbourliness and of care for one another as we have encountered lockdown after lockdown. What's been missing though is the joy and the excitement. As we ponder all these things and look forward to a time when all restrictions are lifted, let us remember that it's not just sports fans who are joyful. As Christians, we are constantly reminded to be joyful in God, to sing praises unto the honour of his name, and to make his praise 
to be glorious. Only one of the first three stanzas in the psalm which we read this evening. I, I read another uh, as we were as we were reading this. This this uh, this verse jumped out at me. Verse three: All the worlds shall worship thee, sing of thee, and praise thy name. I'm sure for those footballers on the pitch tonight, if we win, if England win, uh, I don't know if the world will be worshiping and singing their praises, but certainly the English will. Um, but of course. Human praise and worship of human things is not something that we enter into. We can be very grateful and thankful for those people who serve us, but we worship only the one true God. In the face of triumph and disaster, we gather to sing praise unto God's name. We gather to worship Him. We gather to be joyful in him, no matter the situation in which we are living our lives. We remain totally and always not devastated by the disappointments of life. We know ourselves, as we heard in the first reading, to be adopted by grace into God's family and that gives us a hugely privileged position. We are blessed both by our friendship and our worship. And our fellowship and our worship does not diminish at the, uh, at the blow or the whistle, at the final score. We remain always worshipful and gathered in fellowship with each other. We know that it is God's good pleasure to dispel from us grace and peace, perseverance and joy. So as this nation awaits with eager longing for football to come home, we meet in the silence and peace of this place to worship the God who we know through Jesus Christ, to remind ourselves that in all things it is his will that will be done, and to leave this place with a sense of hope for the future and joy in knowing ourselves loved by God. Amen. If you feel able, please stand as we join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For on the next he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us our salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully deliver us from the call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy children's people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thy inheritance. Be peace in our time, O Lord. Because of this 
is not our blood and our lives are for us. What are we now and our way of God? That God may claim our hearts within us. And to take not the high Holy Spirit from us. The comment for the same Sunday after Tuesday. The God who has prepared for them that love thee such good things has passed man's understanding. Or into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just words we receive, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give. That both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being dependent from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We pray together. Light us in our darkness to be seated in the Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all errors and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We give thee thanks, Lord, for your church called in every age to worship you. Filled with your grace, may we be a symbol to your world of joy, peace and love. We pray for those who lead our church, for Bishop Gumi, Bishop John, Archdeacon Elizabeth, and our area deeds here. Pray for all the churches in the North Church's Commission and Ministry of Partnership as we seek to serve one another. And as we leave this place this evening, may we each commit to be in church in our daily lives and in our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for your world. We pray for those areas in the world where there is poverty. The people who are hungry or thirsty tonight. And we pray for all those who have no shelter from the elements. We pray for areas in the world affected by climate change, by war or insurrection. And we pray for all the leaders of the nations that they should have wisdom and act with integrity in order to serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community and for all those who serve it. We pray particularly at this time for our local schools and preschools as they come to the end of a long summer term. We pray particularly for those who would have sat national examinations this year. Teaching staff who have had to make difficult decisions of reading. And we pray for all those whose final years of school have been disrupted so much by COVID 19 and the restrictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know or love who are in need at this time. And in a moment of quiet, we offer the names of those 
urge you to stay, we say the words of the love of us together, which will find your faith shown to God. Lord, now let us tell thy servant to depart in peace, according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to thy to the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you, today and always. My brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I do invite you, please.